Um, hello everybody. Um, this is apparently a horror game. One of my friends had this, and they wanted me to get it. I didn't know it was free on Steam, so apparently it is on free on Steam. So, we're gonna start a new game. Uh... Boom. I'm scared. Because apparently this is a horror game. I have to read this? I don't want to read this. Who's saying hey? Uh... I don't know what this stuff means. What does this stuff mean? Okay. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. The girl is Sayori, my neighbor and a good friend since we were children. Oh. You know, the kind of friend you'll never see yourself making today, but it's just... Oh, I... I didn't even see it! We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I also feel better off running away. If ever I just sigh and I don't from the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. She's panting now. <laughs> I ever slept again! Did I tell you this time? Maybe, but be only because I decided to stop and wait for you. <laughs> you say like that, we're gonna think about ignoring me. That's mean, Brayden. Oh, sorry. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me, after all. Guess you don't have to... I guess you don't have it in you to be mean if you, even if you don't want to. Whatever you say, Siori. Hee <laughs> We cross the street together and make our w way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. Uh, by the way, Brayden, have you decided on the club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really... I'm really not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Hmm? That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did. I remember many conversations where I dismissively go along wherever she's going on about. Siori likes to worry a little too much about me. When I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I was worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I died the thought of you becoming a neat. I don't know what that is. In a few years, because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look for, at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. We at least promise me that you'll try a little. Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. Guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to cease her, ease her mind at least a little bit. And if she doesn't exaggerate everything inside her head. Dang! This is like a regular... Classroom. An anime. You got the doors right there. You got the window. You got the sponge right there. You got the intercom. You got the classic blinds. The teacher's desk. And you got the little death desk in the corner. And whatever that thing is. <coughs> okay. The school day is as ordinary as ever. And it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, look for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Siri wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Siori? Siri must have come into the classroom when I was facing out. 
I look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. Oh my gosh! I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Siori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Mmm, meanie. Siori is the vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever, ever aware that she had any intent, interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Then she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in the literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And... Natsuki? <laughs> Okay, and Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's just so cunning as to have planned all this out. I let out a long sigh. <laughs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! Oh, great. It's so quiet now. It's about to get scary. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. <laughs> That's like the, <laughs> the most shadiest sentence I've ever seen in my life already. I dejectedly follow Siori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third grader classes and activity. THIRD GRADER! THIRD YEAR? What the? Okay. Siori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. <gasps> Good music now! Yeah. Everyone! The new member's here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Hmm? I glance around the room. Welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Siri always says nice things about you. Seriously, you bought a boy? Way to kill atmosphere. Ah, oh, Brayden, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. They're all girls, as of course. All words escape me in this, this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. I mean, okay. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Uh, sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. <clears throat> the girl with a sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is the one I don't recognize. The small figure makes me think she's probably a fierce tier. She also is the one who makes cupcakes, according to Siori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Siori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Siori and Natsuki. Uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right! It's good to see you again, Brayden. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other well. We rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular in class. Smart, beautiful, and athletic. Basically completely out of my league. Okay. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Brayden. We made a room for you at the table so you could sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little bit too excited. And how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. 
As Siori mentioned, it's been widened so there is one space next to Monika and one space next to Siori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I sit. I take my seat next to Siori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! <gasps> Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Oh, I see a kitty! The whiskers are drawn with icing little pieces of chocolate we used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so get good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one! Siri grabs one first and Monica, I follow. It's delicious! Siri walks over with her mouthful and has already managed to get icing on her face. Oh my. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. She's waiting for me to take a bite. I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Wh why are you thinking me? It's not like I... Have I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? Huh? I thought you technically did, Siri said. Well, maybe. But not you for... You know you do, dummy! Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. They keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, don't, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. You're just trying to impress you. <laughs> that's that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be the same, be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Currently, faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So it made you consider the literature club? Uh... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Siori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Siori really seemed happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. I'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it is my duty to take make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm a surprise. How come you decided to start your own club? You should probably be a board member for many of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica is a really great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. And I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. <clears throat> it must be hard to start a new club. <laughs> My voice is already going. <clears throat> I'm dying. <coughs> you can put it that way. See, see, my voice is cracking now. This is why I don't. This is why I don't play talking games. But it's fine. It's a horror game. Cause it said horror in the genre. Okay. Just it says horror in it. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But make school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we will really get to grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone is in that sticky... Uh, it's a big word, I can't read. Agrees. Such different girls are interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were also delighted by the idea of a new member joining. <gasps> I can just press the spacebar! No need the mouse! But I still really don't know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Raiden, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how I little read about these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. 
I muttered quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Oh, she just wants to say something, but keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces a trim a rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story of such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She can't, she seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Is it that amazing how a writer can be so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Horror! Yep, I knew it! Oh, I read a horror book once. I just really grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might be as well as having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you, I guess you could say that. So if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror! Oh, why is that? Well, I just... That's a good eyes dart over me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you should you you should you yeah yeah <laughs> That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. Looked like you were working on a poem called Don't say that loud And give that back Fine, fine. Your cupcakes are po your poems Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Siri so slides up behind that speed and puts her hands on your shoulders. I'm not cute! That's a key. You write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no! That's Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Aw, uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki, Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing makes her more than just confidence. Trust, the truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you could share some of your work, we can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Ugh. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I want to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Okay. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we will share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Is that that right, Brayden? Monica smiles warmly at, at once me, uh, warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. And what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I've only come forth with that that I've been minded the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Siri may have convinced me to stop by, never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, uh, and, um, I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare at me with dejected eyes. But, 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 I'm sorry, I thought, hmm, <clears throat> Raiden, you, you all, I, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Um. Uh. I mean, yeah, he's got, I got a point, me, I got a point, because that, that's me, right, okay, I've decided then, I'll join the literature club, only one, the girl's eyes light up, yes, I'm so happy, 
Suri wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I'll be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. And remember tonight's assignment? Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we all could share. Monica looks over at me once more. Brayden, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. I can really impress the class star Monica with my mini core writing skills. I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Brayden, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. So Yuri and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! <clears throat> Oh, I didn't even see what was that. Let me go back to the history so I can see what I missed. With that, the two of us depart in the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Siori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monika. Will I really be happy spending it every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Oh, great. <gasps> it's time to write a poem! Pick words you think your favorite club member would like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. I want you already like my poem. Let's see. Fear. What? Okay. Universe. Yes. Fantasy. No. Uh. Memory. No. Yes. 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 No. No. What? Okay. Infinite. Yes. No. Yes. No! What the crap? No! Okay. Uh, engulfment. Yes. Adventure. Can I redo that? Okay, we can't. Why? Why does Monica like that stuff? She's weird. She's gonna kill everybody. Let's see him. Hi again, Brayden. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Brayden. I hope this isn't too overwhelming for a commitment of you, for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. So you already told me you haven't- You didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too! I don't know if you had a plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> <laughs> Natsuki find herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! So we defeated, Natsuki plops back in her seat. Don't worry guys, 
Brandon always gives his best to as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without even me asking. A cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Siri, that's because your room is, all, is so messy and it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Brayden can become good friends too. Uh, um. Is this Sayori? Hmm? Okay. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation you just put me into. Oh, oh! You even brought you something today, you know? Wait, wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sorry, I made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Hey, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess it means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anyone, anything in the first place. So, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that you might thought I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Th this is how this girl accidentally being so cute. She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. Enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some schedule activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Siri and Monica are having the cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki's rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk Yuri a little bit more. Uh, y to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I'd rather feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of her of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she sent lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Huh. Crap. I think she's noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and her eyes met for, meet for a split second. Mm. But that only makes her hide her face just deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I remember this sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. Yeah, but, but I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for my... Not for any particular reason. Just curious, but how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh... Well, when I stopped at a bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Oh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What about it? And what's about it anyway? Well, mmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an obvious looking eye symbol in front of the cover. Alright. I just want to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lo lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from human experiment prison. What the? And her life is in danger. She needs definitely to choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationship and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Mary made it sound like she was, go was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Brayden? No, it's not that. I mean, I could definitely enjoy these those kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into these those things. She's so sly and reluctant, reclusive on the outside. 
but her mind just seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, just because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. And suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made to be the na naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I'm talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Uh... That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Hmm. Let me just get the book. I clearly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright. It's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading and company to someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I still understand what Yuri means by reading and company. It is if I could feel a presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not particularly a bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but it feels somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. She looks like she's reading from my book instead. So sorry! I was just... Yuri, you really do apologize a lot, don't you? I-I do? I don't merely mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I sign my desk up a tell against Yuri's and then hold my book more between the two of them. Eh, I suppose so. Yuri intimately closes her own copy. Once we each learn a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger.